Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to explain working of a half bridge DC to DC converter. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you'll be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get started. This is the circuit diagram of a half bridge DC to DC converter. It basically contains two input capacitors C1 and C2 which will be having the ability to store a voltage of Vs by 2, Vs by 2. So the value of C1 and C2 will be equal in that case and consequently you have two inputs which is Q1 and Q2. The secondary side of the transformer is basically quite similar to push-pull configuration. So the only change is with respect to the primary side. At the first place let us try to understand how DC to DC conversion takes place with respect to this configuration. So this can be understood if we have uh, each of the switches conducting once at a time. So so let us assume when switch Q1 is turned on what happens and Q2 will be turned off in this case. So the equivalent circuit looks like this. Always my suggestion is to ensure that you will draw the equivalent circuit so that it will be very simple for you to analyze. So if you carefully observe the voltage is divided and the amount of voltage that is stored is Vs by 2, Vs by 2. So I am not going to consider the supply here in the equivalent circuit because already the Vs by 2 value that is stored will act as an energy source and it will start discharging isn't it. As a result this itself acts as a source and I am not considering Vs in that case. So now Vs by 2 the voltage that is stored will be appearing across the primary side of the transformer directly because it is short circuited Q1 is short circuited. So consequently this will induce a equal amount of voltage in the secondary side based on the turns ratio but the polarity will be in this particular fashion plus minus plus minus because the dot convention plays an important role. If the dot convention is here then it will be minus and plus here. So that is one important thing that you have to make a note of. Since minus is connected to this particular diode so it becomes reverse bias and access open circuit since positive is connected to diode D1 it is forward biased and access short circuit and hence what happens current starts flowing through this direction the inductor starts charging with a polarity plus and minus the capacitor starts charging with a polarity plus and minus the current flows through the load in this particular fashion the output voltage will be in this particular fashion that is plus and minus because current is flowing in the forward direction from the source to the load and consequently it will return through this path so there will always be a return path for the circuit current isn't it if there is no return path then consequently that will be regarded as an open circuit so since this is already open circuit it cannot return through this path it will return through this path again the current flows through this direction so this is the loop in which the current flows however if you carefully observe you are getting a DC voltage at this terminal so our desired operation is achieved isn't it we want we are using a DC voltage source we are getting a DC voltage at the output terminals so now what happens if we are doing the same thing with respect to switch Q2 now let us assume switch Q2 is turned on and Q1 is turned off so consequently what happens the equivalent circuit looks something like this since it's quite confusing let us try to rearrange this so it looks like this now so if you carefully observe I've just placed this in this particular position but the nature of the circuit is quite similar so only thing is uh, for us to easily understand what why I am trying to do this is the capacitor if you carefully observe plus is appearing at this terminal minus is directly appearing at this terminal because it is short circuited isn't it. So this can further be rearranged like this. So minus plus Vs by 2. So directly minus is appearing at this point plus is appearing at this point. So I just wanted to simplify the way in which the circuit looks and this is how the circuit looks. So when Q2 conducts minus Vs by 2 will appear across the the primary side of the transformer very very important observation I'll tell you the reason why that is important but as of now minus and plus is the polarity in which the primary winding of the transformer is associated with consequently this will induce equal amount of voltage based on the turns ratio if you're using two is the turns ratio with respect to the secondary side twice the amount of voltage will be built but the polarity will be the same minus plus minus plus because of the dot convention as I showed you earlier. Since plus is connected to diode D2 it will be forward biased isn't it? Since minus is connected to diode D1 it will be reverse biased and access open circuit. Consequently what happens now? Current starts flowing through this direction, current flows through this direction, current flows through this direction. One important observation to make here. Previously the inductor had charged with a polarity plus and minus in the previous cycle isn't it? And the current was flowing in this direction what inductor does is that it reverses its polarity and starts acting as an energy source and ensures that current does not reverse its direction that means inductors does not allow sudden change in current current will still be flowing in the same direction as it was originally flowing as a result it will reverse its polarity according to the property of Lenz law and current will be flowing in the same direction as it was originally flowing in the previous cycle inductor 
store access energy source consequently capacitor also had previously charged isn't it it also starts acting as an energy source current flows through this path current flows through the load in this particular fashion the polarity of output voltage is plus or minus so how does the current return now current flows through this path current flows through this path current flows through this path and obviously the cycle repeats this is the loop in which the current flows so i hope this concept is clear now i will ask you an important question that is very very common uh, so a lot of people will be having this confusion how dc supply is given to a transformer because if you carefully observe the circuit diagram we had given dc supply to the transformer input by using some switches but how is it like we can connect a dc supply to a transformer one important observation we are not directly connecting a dc supply to the transformer we are using through switches but how does it work with respect to dc supply a lot of people will be having this question isn't it so let us try to observe the waveform so the voltage across the primary winding initially when switch q1 was conducting what was the voltage that was appearing vs by 2 isn't it so now consequently when switch q1 is turned on turned off and q2 is turned on what happens the voltage across it will instantaneously turn to off condition and consequently due to the switch q2 that is conducting the voltage across the primary winding will be equal to minus vs by 2 initially it was vs by 2 and when q2 conducts and q1 is turned off it will be minus vs by 2 so again when q1 conducts vs by 2 again when q2 conducts it is minus vs by 2 so what i am trying to say is this is a, the dc although dc supply was used this is actually an ac waveform if you carefully observe we have positive values we have negative values and they are periodic in nature with respect to each other so a lot of people will be confused we are giving dc supply to a transformer but it does not work but one important thing is we have to ensure that the core of the transformer does not saturate because there is a lot of time duration over here so what we will be doing is we will ensure that the time duration of this will be as small as possible it will just be like a pulse so it acts like a pulse transformer that is what we popularly say it so these type of configurations like half bridge as a whole as a summary why is it useful because if you see the capacitors are used at the input side the maximum amount of voltage that is applied across each of the switches is vs by 2 so the cost of the switches is much lesser in comparison with push pull configuration and the open circuit voltage when the switch is not conducting is only vs whereas in the push pull converge con configuration it was two times vs and that is why like half bridge are popularly used for high voltage applications in hvdc whereas push pull is used for low voltage applications both are used in smps applications but the voltage ratings in which they are used is slightly different i hope you were able to understand uh, the entire working of a half bridge dc to dc converter on your own in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching this video meet you guys in another video please do keep supporting thank you